family together. Optus Family Plan with four SIMs and 250 gigs of data to share. Hello everybody and welcome back to Meta here. Of course, we are diving head first into the team. My name is Ewan Midnight Reed and joining me for our Rocket League games today is Benjamin Tico Lee. Hello everyone, welcome to Meta High School Esports 2020. It's gonna be great, we are Victorians ourselves. And I gotta say, it's, it's a little bit of a dire situation right now, but in hindsight, it's sort of our fault, but that doesn't matter because uh, <laughs> because we are getting into some Rocket League gameplay. It's going to be the highlight of the next couple weeks as well um, because Victorians rule. I'm kidding. We all have to wear masks. It's great. Yeah. All right. So we'll dive into our first, uh, our best of seven series. Yeah. And the teams that are going to be facing up against each other is going to be on the blue side. Of course, we have Yara Valley Grammar. And facing up against them in the challenge to try and conquer Victoria, if you will, will be Over Newton, Angelical. Oh my lord. Angelical. Nope. Do, do, you do, do you want me to do it? Do you want me to do it midnight? I give up. Okay. I've, I've, been, defeated by, I've been defeated by words. <laughs> Over Newton, Anglican. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> so it's going to be very fun to watch these two teams budding heads today, Tigo, because. I'm very excited to see because this is the team that will eventually have to push their way forwards through mm. Victoria and try and take down the other states. Yeah, I mean, it's if they both teams, well, one of the teams are going to be moving through and going into the nationals finals, which is a great achievement if you say, hey, I'm representing my state against the entirety of Australia, so it must feel good to do so. But there's some big news within the Rocket League community. We're gonna we're gonna move a little bit past Meta HSE, right? Right? Okay. I'm Let's pretty sure it. you know about this, but Rocket League Psionics has announced that Rocket League is gonna go free to play on the Epic Games Store in the summer of 2020. So it's gonna be great fun, everybody. Um, those who are currently playing Rocket League are are gonna have you know, a few, well, let's say rewards for being previous people or previous players of the Rocket League when it wasn't free to play. Um, so those who have paid get some, you know, uh, free to play some DLC. I'll I'll just go through what they, what they get picked up for that. So you get all Rocket League branded DLC released that, well, that was released before the free to play. You get an established title. So established whenever you started, whichever year you started. Um, you get a title that displays a year um, when you first started. 200 plus common items upgraded to the legacy quality, I believe. Uh, the Golden Cosmos boost, which uh, I don't think we've seen yet. I, I honestly have no clue about boost. The Daiki Aura wheels and the Huntress player banner, as well as prior to today's announcement. If you have played Rocket League, you'll receive the Faded Cosmos boost, which is uh, not too bad. It's not too bad, but that's really what Psyonix has released for us today. Um, it has been in the works for a while. Epic Games and Psyonix have been talking about uh, the buying of Rocket League over to the Epic Games Store. And even if, um, sorry, even when it gets transferred over to the Epic Games Store, you still will be able to ro access Rocket League through Steam even though it will become available on Epic Games Store. So don't fret if you have stored everything on your Steam and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to show everyone my hours and how much time I've been spending on Rocket League. It'll still be there. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm guilty of some of that there. Um, but that's something really cool that I've noticed recently, just in gaming in general, is like that old... Um, I'm going completely on a tangent here, but like that old Star Wars MMO, uh, the MMO of Night Republic is now on Steam as well. I don't know why, because you can just get it normally, but hey... Games are moving around right now, and there's some more fun stuff on. So, 
We'll be diving into our first game here. Of course, before we dive into that, thanks to our sponsors um, who are helping run and help partnership us, of course, which, of course, you can see them behind myself and Tika. That is going to be Acer Intel, Optus, uh, Torrent University, as well as Harvey Norman. So thanks to them for helping us run today's fun. Now, Tico, in our previous last week series, we saw, I believe it was New South Wales teams butting heads, and it was a little bit of a, a struggle. Let's, let's not put it lightly. It was a 4-0 victory uh, in that game. Coming into here, we said last week that game one is often the scouting game. You feel your opponents out. The Victorian team, the, the motive, the setup should still be the same regardless of the way, right? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these... I'm going to say the, a lot of these amateur games, I'm not necessarily saying that the high school games are amateur and low rank. I'm saying that even at the stages of Rocket League Oceania, Revolve OCE, Bluebird Rivals OCE, these guys, they all use, and these are amateur players, but they are at the grand champ level. So they know what they're doing. They always use their first game as a feeler game because they want to see the sort of tactics that the other game, that the other team is using. And when you do so you start to get a feel for how you should be playing if the other team is playing slow you might want to either counter that or play fire with fire you either want to it's up to you if they're playing slow and, and calculated they want to get some passing plays going you might want to be aggressive get those 50 50s early make sure you challenge high or you can counter that by staying back get them to bring the ball over to you and then you go on to, onto the challenges late it's sort of a game of chess when it comes to the first game but we are seeing both teams join the game and i'm excited to get this best of seven series in victoria going yeah let's kick things off with a banger here tigo and the first game is about to kick off here yara valley grammar up against over newton uh community college now first kickoff will be very exciting here let's see can anyone get themselves an early advantage it looks like the kickoff does go to over newton at least at the beginning, but can they make anything of it is the real question. And a few aerial fumbles already coming up for both teams. Yeah, but I mean, it is the first game and it is, I mean, somewhat early for gamers at this time of day. It's, I mean, midday, but you know, you know how it early is. Early for gamers, definitely. I mean, these these kids are high schoolers. They, they should it's... know the feeling of being tired and they should be used to it. <laughs> being tired still at midday, we're having to wake up at the God knows what awful time, but a good demo coming out. It seems like Yara Valley Grammar are going to be playing aggressive. I saw when they were on the attack, they pushed all three members up past the halfway point. Very dangerous spot to put the ball in, though. Nice shot from Gav. Hits the crossbar. Is there any follow through? Not from Marky. He gets close. But can Arena get the shot? No bit on the side as well. A nice, a nice counter attack here from over Newton. But it just didn't net anything. And now they're going to be forced to play some defense. Yeah, a bit of control coming out from these guys. A lot of aggression, as I said, from Yara Valley Grammar. Oh. But a good snipe and a shot from Arena. Yeah, Arena there was just able to snatch the ball away. Look at this. He's almost in a free-for-all against his team. Slinks it past the defense there and gets the first goal. A bit over a minute into the first game of this series. I mean, it might not have been intentional, but that was a great pass coming out from Marky. Arena being in the right spot to come and help him out. So a good display of teamwork coming out from Yara Valley Grammar. Yeah. That comes out beautifully on that one there. Look at that. Just instantly. A great Ooh. double tap coming out from Pure Bum. I mean, well, not necessarily a double, but he got it off the backboard, predicted where it was going to land and a beautiful display of what he's capable of on the car and where he's able to see where the ball's landing. These guys are coming out strong. What a save. Unfortunately, not able to save on that one there. They're setting out one of these early demos coming through as well. Try to make one work. The tap. No! By skin of the teeth is that one missed there. That's going to be a little bit heartbreaking for Yara Valley. They will try to get the counter attack going. Grins up in the air. Pure trying to get a double tap. Not able to get the follow through. Oh my lord! Please make that work! Oh, that's a heartbreaker. This is the moment. But the attack isn't over just yet. Arena misses the clear. Brand tries to push that one in, but it is just not connecting on these shots. So be well, can he get it? Yes, he can. A beautiful spot to be able to slot that one into. A couple of attempts being able to do so. Marky trying to get a good clear, but it bounced off the sidewall, putting the ball into the center for WL to take. 
He takes every opportunity he can to be able to score those. A good attempt at a save from Obernewton, but they weren't able to do so. Two and one in favor of Yarvel. And gotten themselves a nice start, but they need to keep it up and keep it growing. You can't just sit on a one goal lead and assume that that's going to keep you safe here. Mm. As we're seeing an attack going in, pure goes to WL, but gets intercepted there by Marky. A really good job on the defense. Yeah, they try to push it past the halfway. For Brennan, he's going to be the one to be able to stop that one from going any further into his half. These guys are putting... I mean, they're basically giving the ball over to Obernewton when they have a failed attempt at a shot. Not necessarily something that they want to do, but maybe it's the sort of play that they're going off in the back of their minds. I don't know what they're saying. Maybe if we could have listened to their comms, but unfortunately, we can't, and we'll just have to see how they're playing instead. But the nice attempt from over to try and get a bit of offense, but it just does not work itself out much. It should be forced like that. Defense Gabman trying to be cute here with this clear, but I don't really see it netting up anything. Although Arena felt like he had other plans coming in here. But push back at least for the side of now. Yara Valley will try to continue building the lead that they've got so far. Few of them can get the shot, not with a shot like that. Yeah, real close coming out from both teams. It is a very even game. But if they take these opportunities, they need to make sure that they always have that one person ready to take the shots. Especially when you have someone coming in from the corner, you need to make sure that someone's there for the cross, for the pass in. No one's ready on the defense for the counter-attack, though. That's one thing I have to concern Yara Valley Grammar with. If Over Newton come in with a quick counter-attack, I'm not exactly sure they're going to be ready for it. Cost of their constant aggression coming in there. It's just not always going to have that man back on defense. But so far, it seems like they aren't being too lazy. with a really nice pass over. There should be a nice setup in mid. What was that move by Pure? That was a bit ballsy. I, I love it. But that could have gone for disastrously wrong so quickly. Yeah, but I mean, he knows what he's doing. He's a beautiful goalkeeper, even if he utilizes his own goalpost to be able to save the ball. Dangerous game, but this man plays with fire. As we're now down into the final minute coming in here for the start for these two teams. Still one goal lead here for Yaram Valley. That does mean over Newton can as they, you know, pull up the shots a little bit here, but just not like ever. There we go. WL finds the opening. Yeah, a beautiful touch coming out from Pure Bum. The control passes it off the backboard and WL coming with the underside flick, being able to score a goal. Not necessarily a flick. Just some style points coming out from WL. Could be the Torrens University player of the game there, but we'll have to wait and see. With 45 seconds left of the game, Arena trying to put something in front of net. These guys, they aren't necessarily coming out of goal. Look how far Marky is pushed back. Yeah, he's ready for the counterattack, but he's not helping his teammates in the offense. See, going uh, forced to play back on defense as all I was able to get that one in there. That was such a close counterattack. But now with that one failing, you have to feel like Yara Valley is being very confident that the first game of this series is going to go in their favor. Oh, that bounce is awkward though. No one going up for that one. It it really shows that Over Newton is, I'm not going to say scared, but they're really reluctant to go up for these 50-50s. And yeah, they're playing a really defensive game, but it doesn't seem like it is working in their favor. And yeah, 1-0 going in favor of Yara Valley Grammar. And it wasn't like a massive blowout lead. It was a 3-1 at the end of the day for Yara Valley. And for most of the game, it was sitting at a pretty safe 2-1 lead. So coming into the second game now, we have a bit of a clear identity between the two of these teams. Specifically, you look at the line of Over Newton and they feel, as you said, almost afraid to go through the 50 50 It's a very defensive style. In my experience, because that doesn't typically do well when you're trying to you know, win a competitive best of series in Rocket League. Well, it depends on how they're going to utilize this defense. I mean, all they really need to do is they need to, because how we look at it as spectators, Yar Valley Grammar, they're very, very offensive. They want to take as many advantages as possible, which means they're bringing all three members up into the attack. They're pushing all three members past that halfway point. The Over Newton Anglican team, if they commit three members to the defense, that means they have to have a really, really strong and a really, really fast counterattack. I'm not seeing that happen from them. And I really want to see them being able to pick that up and, and capitalize on the lack of defense or lack of 
preparation for the counterattack from Yara Valley Grammar. I think that's how they're going to be able to outplay Yara Valley if they continue to play to this defensive style. Mm. Well, I kind of hope they do like almost, I don't expect it in a way, but a dramatic shift away from this defensive style we are seeing. I want to see this aggression. I want to see some fight coming out of them here. Because defense will only get you so far. Because, yeah, Shot the saying, what the best offense is strong defense. I don't necessarily think that's how it works in the world of Rocket League. So, we'll see. Do they continue to employ defensive? Or oh, they go a bit more on the offensive here. So far, it doesn't look very promising. They've left a hole in their defense speed. Not able to make use of it, though. Oh, but they do have more opportunities to come. As we said, they're pushed up real far. And if they continue to play to this game, Over Newton, they're going to have to commit some more members to the offense because they're not getting any quick counterattacks going. Yara Valley Ga Grammar are just hammering at this goal. And there's only so much damage a brick wall can take. And Pure Bum takes the first goal. Yeah, like, it's only so long you can hold out trying to fight defensively until they find an opening, until they find a hole in your defense, and they will break you open. I love the idea of the defensive playstyle. I fear, though, it is more of his nerves. They know they're having they're playing such an important game. They know that they can't afford to lose it. That plays into their mentality of, okay, let's play really defensively. And unfortunately, they're only going to get punished more and more by sticking to this defensive playstyle that they're choosing to run. Mm, yeah, it's... Again, it's not that they're scared. It's just that they have... They are feeling quite a bit of pressure and... Yeah, they might be scared of losing the game, but if they're scared of losing the game, they cannot be scared of losing the goals. They need to commit. And really, there's only so much you can lose from, you know, trying some offensive attacks. And if they don't continue to do so, look at the dribbles from Arena. They need to try and commit for those, and especially the second touches as well on the offense, or else they're not going to be able to do too much. Exactly. Arena able to get the aerial play that has turned things around finally seeing some more life here from over Newton. But it's still really, they need to keep this going now. You've got this third goal, congratulations. Now you need to keep the offensive going. Now you need to keep the attack going. Because if you start pulling back and returning to this defensive style, yeah, Valley, that's gonna run over you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm loving how they were able to bring that one back. And it does show that they are capable of getting some offensive counters going with that second touch, with the follow through coming from the teammates. But with the outplay, out positioning from WL, he takes the second goal for his team. Really nice shot there. Over Newton, just when they're starting to feel better about themselves, just when they start saying, hey, let's get going, we can pull this off. They just get pushed back down into the dirt. But they can't let that stop them. They can't be like, all right, we'll push down, that's it, you're done. It's, what's that bad man going? It doesn't matter about if you get knocked down or not. It's how many times you get back up. That's what Over Newton's got to get doing right now. They've got to get back up on their feet. They've got to keep this offense going because if they just roll over, they're never going to make it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm loving how Yara Valley are playing because they see how defensive Over Newton are playing. And they're like, hey, we can commit all three members up into the offense. We can get some double touch, maybe even some passes off the backboard. And really, they're not going to get punished for it because there aren't any quick counterattacks coming from Over Newton. And, and they're realizing this. So they're, there's two members committed for the defense. No one pushed up for the counterattack. And they're just, hey, we can, we can run back and, and defend the ball quite easily if they get a good clear. Hmm. And... In a way, I would like agree with this heavy defensive style of always keeping two men back if it was working, but it's not. Yarra Valley are constantly able to find their opening, find a way to get past the defense and grab themselves. Really help, they're one ball up again coming into the second game of this series. They need to risk being more offensive because if you're not going to play offensive, or I'm sorry, you're just not going to be able to win this kind of game coming in here. As you're seeing a few whips around the ball, a bit of a slower clear from Arena, not able to get the connection on the follow up. You're trying to set up a WL, WL, getting a beautiful <laughs> hit. This man is on fire. Look at the, ch the challenges of 50 50. I mean, a bump coming out onto his own teammates, but that doesn't matter. WL, he had the better positioning, he had the dunk going, and then he takes the goal with a good 50 50 challenge, bringing their team to a 3 and 1. We're in the same situation, TQ. We were in game number one. The only difference is it happened a minute and a half earlier. 
in second one. Urban Newton just aren't able to go blow for blow, toe for toe against their opponents. And again, partly that is the style that they are choosing to play. The nerves perhaps coming in here as the CWL can get itself a bit of a lazy one there. Pure trying to do a jump up. Speed gets the connection. There's no one really in the position to follow it. Yeah, they're, they're slow to it, but they are at an advantage. Two goals, they have the time. They have a minute. They really, all they need to do is delay this game at this point. And, and they're doing so. They're keeping this ball up at the halfway. Good dribble from Gladman, though. Oh, but Pure able to hold on there. Stop the game from getting too close. All you need to do from the side of Yarra Valley is now hold on and build. Keep, keep the lead you've got going. Ironically, adopt the play style of hmm. your opponent as speed. Going 1v2, actually able to take the ball out there. As Arena trying to set up around the center for them. Not able to make that one work either. You're trying to do a nice bit of a clear there. Should be able to with the help of WL. Get taken away by Gray. Speed going wide. The rotations are also clean of the defense coming out from... I say that. And then they just get scored up. Uh, it's the Caster curse, my guy. It's the curse. They are listening to this. And every time I say that, they're listening to this and they're like, No, Tico, that's not happening. We're actually going to let them score a goal just because you said that. It was a really nice shot there. But now over Newton, they've got 30 seconds to get at least one goal to draw into overtime. Given everything we've seen of them coming into the first and the second game as well, I'm just not sure they're going to be able to pull that off with the well, lack of their forward progression we see. Although Gadman nearly did put that one through. Marky trying to make something else as well. I don't know. It seems like they might have switched something on with this, with this offense because they committed all three members up to the attack, which is great. But a really good clear coming out from Yar Valley, which meant that there was a potential goal. And with one second left, a good touchdown coming out from the Yara Valley Spuds or Yara Valley Grammar. And they do take the second game with a two for two for oh victory. Yeah, currently now sitting three uh sorry that sitting two oh now in this best of seven series. It's going fantastically for Yara Valley. This is kind of what you hope. Coming up against another Open Newton. We saw flashes of this aggressive style coming out of them into the second game of the series. I feel like they have to start doing that just more consistently because right now, for most of the game, they are sitting back, playing defensively, falling behind, and then realizing the last minute, minute and a half is, oh crap, we've got to, we have to win. We need to play offensively. Oh God, what are we going to do, boys? Like, they need to get this aggression that they have in that last minute, minute and a half and drive forwards with it for the entirety of the game, not just that last minute. So hopefully coming into this next game, Tico, they do that because it'll be heartbreaking to watch them simply play defensively and then get punished for it. Mm, yeah, no, they, they are starting to bring out the aggressive style. I love to see how they're playing it as well. But I mean, they don't necessarily have to go away from what they're comfortable with. They they're playing a defensive style, and I love that, especially when they play against an aggressive team like Yara Valley Grammar. The fact is that they aren't getting the counterattacks going. Um, but with the servers down, we are going to have to take a short break just so that we can get it back up. And so a great spectating view for you guys as well. We'll be right back with some more action. We'll see you guys soon.
your family together. Optus Family Plan with four SIMs and 250 gigs of data to share. Hey guys, and welcome back to the, after the first two games of Rocket League, of course we have game three, four, and well, what could be five, and furthermore in our best of seven series, I'm still Midnight, still joined by Tico coming in here, and Tico, first two games, Yarra Valley have taken, I think it's better to say control of this series, what does Open Union have to do to come back into this, because right now they're sitting two games down in a best of seven. Look, we, we keep saying it over and over again, but there are multiple tactics to be able to come back into this game. They like a defensive style. I mean, I'm not going to say if it ain't broke, don't fix it, because it's sort of broke because they've lost two games, but they can still stick to the defensive style. But as I've said before, all they really need to do is to make sure that they're playing a bit more aggressive when it comes to the 50-50s and not necessarily go onto the offense more but make sure that they get those 50-50 challenges earlier, especially when they're defense. Get their rotations. They need to rely on their teammates because the way threes works, and if you aren't in somewhat of a higher elo, platinum plus, diamond plus, you won't necessarily know exactly what you need to do to be able to rotate properly. Some professional teams, the rotations are so clean, and really, all you have to do commit one member, well not commit one member, make sure you rotate one member onto that back post, another person going up for that 50-50, and the third person is rotating back to replace the goalkeeper who's gonna go for the challenges next, and it's a constant rotation. And if they wanna play for this defensive styles, they need to continuously do this, these rotations, get their rotations cleaner, and I think that's how they're gonna be able to do so. And once they get their clears going as well, they'll be golden. Well, they need to get that one off as First kick off of game number three, kicking off nice and well. So far, there is a bit more aggression maybe coming out of Newton here. It's what we were hoping to see here, but will it net itself anything more? Well, let's see. I think this defensive playstyle is going out of the way there, Chico. We have a demo as you're coming through. We've got some more aggression, but we've also got some fancy footwork here from WL. Yeah, I mean, these guys are playing the aggressive style we've seen in the first two games, and I'm really loving the angles that they're putting here. Oh my gosh, that's an awkward touch. Very sped. He's got time. A really good defense coming out from Overnewton to stop that from happening. But look at this. They're getting, they're bringing it back to their own team to be able to regain possession. Unfortunately, Demo comes in. We got a bloodthirsty game here, Tiga. This is what we want to be seeing coming in to our third game. A whole new style coming out from Overnewton. And it's a style that personally I think is absolutely bangers. Um, and they're seeing some counter-attack coming through. I think the guys are forgetting it's an objective-based game, not a team deathmatch right now, lads. You still got to get the ball in the goal. As we're seeing Marky trying to get the right angle for the ball, and just not able to really find what he's looking for. I mean, you know what helps putting the ball in the goal? Removing yeah. one of their team members. I mean, I know that all too well. Making it a 3v2. Oh, what? wait, they're pushing both. He's pushing him out of the way. Wait, what? They didn't have anyone ready for that counter-attack. That's how Over Newton played this game. Arena, he had a quick counter-attack. Might not have been as quick as I had liked it to be, but it doesn't matter. It did the job. He caught all three members out from Yara Valley Grammar, and none of them were ready for that counter-attack, and they're playing the defensive style really well. Oh my god, Arena with the... <laughs> this, this is the counter-attack we were hoping for, Zico. This is Over Newton. Okay. All right, defensive ain't working. Let's play the offense. Let's play aggressive. Let's hurry our way through the Victorian finals. I feel like Arena is watching the stream and he's like, you know what? That Coster Tico is probably right. Let's commit one member up to the offense and see if we can get a couple goals out of it. Yeah, you can. That's why you should listen to your Coster Tico for coach. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think the best part so far is we've seen like Tico for RLCS. Um, in chat as well. Tico is always right. Don't forget, <laughs> Tico will never put you gifts coming in there. As a single offense coming through, you're not able to get the connections he was looking for there. Yarra Valley, they need to start doing something. This aggressiveness working fantastically for them so in the first two games. 
But now when their opponents are actually fighting back on a fair playing field, it doesn't seem to be going too well, but they will at least grab themselves one. Okay, so that 3v1 was just unfair. Marky, he didn't have a good touch there. And then Pure Bum comes in with very sped. WL is on the sideline saying, hey, if he somehow manages to stop this one, I am so ready to clap that ball into the goal that he does a, a 3v1. It's most of the time going to go in their oh, favorite arena. going to get this one. Pure able to hold the line there. A beautiful block. One, two, punch is... Oh, oh my God. God. A little bit too high there. Arena cannot get the dump tap in either. Heartbreak there for Urban News. Oh, the, the, the goalposts are just not working with them today. But they are still in the lead and they have time to score another couple goals because we all know one goal is not a good enough buffer to say, hey, we've taken this game, especially when there's two minutes left. Doesn't matter. Very sped. Takes the opportunity. It takes the goal to equalize the scoreline. Look at the setup here. He gets past both of them. A double commit coming out there from Over Newton. I just think it's so weird to see a double commit on the side wall like that, but they get punished for it, it evens up the goal, and now with two minutes, teams are dead even. As I think you're fighting up in the air against Marky. That's just unfortunate miscommunication, and as I was talking about before, they want to use this defensive style, they need to get that communication going, but most of all, their rotations, there was a lack of communication, which meant that their rotations weren't going to be done properly. They didn't say, hey, I'm going for this one. Pure bum, however, takes the opportunity for an open net and takes the goal. You should not be able to slip that one past there, but a beautiful shot there. No one's in position to get back and defend. You talked about before, you know, you need one person rotating back on defense, one person moving into position. They just weren't in the positions where they needed to be, get punished for it, and now with just under two minutes to go over Newton, find themselves in perhaps an all too familiar position given the state of this series. Uh, really unfortunate that they put themselves here again, but with a 2v1, Fear Bomb is ready for that. I mean, they say, hey, they got a counter attack goal. We're not gonna let that ever happen again. So they have that one man ready, but he's only gonna be in the halfway line once they push into the offense. Just watch, watch it happen. Very sped, however, Marky trying to get some offense is going he doesn't have any teammates pushing up with him they're going back into their slum of let's commit to the defense which is the best idea when you're already a goal down like when you're behind you need to be the ones on the offense your opponents have no need to feed you an offensive arena can you get it past wl not gonna let that one fly marky trying to do something up on the wall a little bit out of control gets us around past the little bit of not able to get a connection though that is a heartbreak air arena now trying to do some sort of setup there, but it's just lost control in the middle of the field. Yeah, he tries to get a passing play going. That's a dangerous spot to put the ball, especially when you know have when you don't have anyone on the back post. But that oh. doesn't matter when Man Marky comes flying in. It should be fine though. Good clear. Clear, not able to connect that in the air from Marky either. That could have been a goal. As they are now 30 seconds left on the clock here. WL trying to set up for speed on the wall. Not going to work there. There's no one back on defense. This could be disaster, but with the demo going to arena, if he doesn't get this one to work, that could be a disaster for Open Newton. Yeah, but they are getting the clears going, and I'm loving that they are doing so. But with the counter attacks arena, we have to be careful of him. He scored the first two goals. We know he's quick with turning the pace of the game around, but they're not going to let that happen. Three for two, two seconds left. Is it going to touch down? Pure Bomb's not going to let that happen. Good clear from arena. Surely this, yeah, this hit will hit the ground eventually. That will be Yarra Valley taking themselves the third game in this best of series. And they're now one game away from wrapping this up nice and early in a pretty little bow here. As all they need is one more game, and Yarra Valley will be winning the regional finals here down in Victoria. Now, the play of that game, I am, I mean, the Torrens University play that game, I believe is that 3v1 i mean they committed all three members and i loved that they were so confident in how they were playing that they're like hey let's push up all three members to the exact same spot and say yeah it's a it's a 3v1 we've got this in the bag we don't even have to set anyone in back it, it it's a cocky play but it worked nonetheless because they put fear into the hearts of the defense mm. and for newton's defense i'm really worried Tico, because they've shown this tendency when they start panicking, when they start falling behind, they retreat to it. And I'm sure it's what got them here. They seem very, very comfortable doing it. 
The issue is that Yaravelli's aggression isn't going to let that fly. They're not going to simply let them sit back. So, Onu, they're caught in a really annoying crossroads. If they decide to go left and play this defensive style that probably got them here in the first place, I don't see how they win this game. If they go right and play an aggressive style, it's going to get them a lead. It did last game. But then they're probably going to just suddenly do a U-turn and retreat to their defensive habits and fall behind again. So, does Evan Newton decide to pretty much have to abandon, like, get the playbook, toss it out, and then pray that that's going to be enough to get them the fourth game of this series? Hmm. Well, I mean, obviously they do need to change one... Th well, they need to change a couple things up when it comes to... <laughs> Turning this game into a reverse sweep, it's a hard ask. You have to win four games in a row, losing the first three. It's happened before. It can happen again. Open Newton Anglican Community College, there is so much potential in this team, but I think they're just a little bit, you know, scared of being yeah. able to do so. It makes sense in a way. This is probably the biggest stage a lot of these guys have played on, and that's that can get nerve wracking. So they're probably a little bit nervous. They know that there are people watching them. They know that there are people judging them on the performance of their play. So you naturally are going to play a big defense. Oh. What? How does that flip through? Okay, so that was an awkward bounce. WL putting into the corner and Pure Bomb gets somewhat of a pre flick, but he barely touches the ball as well. I think he just stole that ball from, from WL because uh, WL might not be too happy with that one. Oh, no, you wouldn't be happy about that one at all. Like, getting scored on, especially in that manner, sucks. Coming through there. So, we'll see, can they get a counterattack? Because, again, we want the aggression from over Newton to be almost the defining quality in this game here. And it looks like it might be enough. Come on, one more bounce. Let's do it. Not able to get the angle they were gunning for there. And a little bit heartbreaking because that could have been the opening they were looking for. Yeah, I mean, there's so much potential for them to be able to take that one away. But look, two members in the back line, a double commit as well. Lucky that they got a good clear off the back of that. Eurobomb, however, is going to be able to get the clear. Three members in the defense. It's going to be hard to be able to take a goal. WL sends it up to very sped, and the communication is key coming out from them. And they should be able to, to I mean, just constantly put pressure onto the defense. AG Speed setting up for the pass there. Can he get it? No, gets blocked by the defense there. And this could be a counter attack. Trying to get it over Pure. Pure should be able to do a relatively easy clear here. Either way, he slips it past. Is anyone in the follow through? No one is able to get the connection there. A demo coming out in the club, man. Oh, Could I love this. A... Oh, Marky at the last second coming in to hold the line. And WL should prevent any more shenanigans coming in, at least for a little while. That was a beautiful play coming out from the man on the bumps. He took one demo, went for another, gets a flip reset, Ooh. went for another bump onto the goalkeeper. Unfortunate that the rotations were clean coming out from over Newton, but doesn't matter. They do have more opportunities. Three minutes coming out from them. Yes, chat. There was a flip reset you were asking for. A beautiful shot from Marky as he takes the slot between the two defenders. Yeah, really nice here. Yeah, Arenas almost sets him up beautifully. Pure realizes far too little, far too late what was going on. And by the time he's in position, it's simply far too late in that situation. They're drawing it up three minutes now left on the clock here. As, oh, can this work for Marky now? A bit too aggressive there. But this third, this fourth game here, Tico, over Newton, they're not retreating to this defensive style. And I really like the shift that, they've, that, that they're coming out with. That was a beautiful clear coming out from Marky. He sniped that. I wouldn't be surprised if he's got an aimbot going on in Rocket League. Uh, just for clarification, everyone, what? aimbot's not an actual thing in Rocket League, but very sped. He's like, e actually, I can still aimbot it because he snipes that from across the field. Yeah, that was a beautiful shot there. Um, wow, I'm so amazed that that kind of shot pulled itself off there as now with two and a half minutes left on this game here. Yarra Valley, they're going to have to try and continue to this. Over Newton again, this shift in style, this aggression coming out of them, honestly, is really nice to see. I'm a huge fan of it, because it will find them their openings just like that. Marty, that was a flex. A beautiful flex on the back of that as well. Gladman, a beautiful challenge with that 50. He gets somewhat of a pre-flip, not really. 
but he does get the angles to do so. Bounces it off the upright and is able to score a glorious goal to show off what he's capable of. And, and the build up is really nice here. Oh, some more fun shenanigans. No one's back on defense. This could be the dust Mikey. Can't get the angle. WL was being so annoying to prevent that. He has no boost in the end, not able to get the connection, but it was more than enough to push the enemy team away. And threaten it up in the air for 50 hmm. Yeah, they bring the scoreline back to a two for two. It was unfortunate that Marky wasn't able to get enough speed to be able to catch up to that ball, but they still have time, two minutes left. The passing plays coming out from Yara Valley. They saw that Over Newton have started to play an aggressive style and they're like, how do you counter an aggressive style? You pass the ball around and make them run in circles. It's the same strategy you use in the under 10 basketball. If they're ball chasing, just pass it around, you'll be fine. Um... <laughs> What we're seeing out there and seeing a counter attack not really working out there an attempt to clear but not really uh connecting too nicely there yes understand basketball i know i'm old um coming out there as marky and he's trying something here but he doesn't have the position w gets the steal oh. and no slips it past the defense that is not a good spot that you want to be in. Look, Marky clears it, but he clears it center, not the position you want to be in. And WL gets a beautiful touch arena, trying to predict where the ball was going to go, but he didn't get the right prediction. WL slots it into the bottom, well, the left side of the goal is able to take a advantage. But guys, still a minute left in this game. There's every chance that Over Newton can potentially bring this into overtime, especially when arena's on the ball. Get it, he's just hunting it down. He's like a madman possessed coming out for this ball at Arena. Able to get the connection. No one on the follow through. One minute now left on the clock. Diego, this is such a critical minute here as your has to hold the defense. Their defense crumbles. They're going to get over his feet. Not able to make it work. Love the rotations. They are prepared for that goal to potential for Arena to potentially lose a 50 50 which I love to see them doing. Three members committing in the offense as well. They're gonna get a bump, however, it is going to put Arena in a bad spot, but the passing play is not coming through from over, uh, from Yara Valley Grammar. Fine time. Arena might be able to get this one. We just get over pure. Ooh. One more bounce. Crossbar doesn't get the angle they were hoping for. A disaster there for over Newton. They were kind of banking on that working. And now they've got like, basically 10 seconds to make another goal work. Clear the ball, clear the ball. This is what Yara Valley's saying. They need to make sure that ball stays into the offensive half or else Over Newton have potential to leave this up. I mean, oh, that no. touch is one more touch. They got to keep it up. The Doesn't look like they're going to... That could be a disaster. Where is the ball? I can't see the damn thing. It's coming down. It's staying up. They just need to play interference on this side. It is so close. It could be a 4 0. Oh, and it will be, but not from a lack of trying. Over Newton. Especially in that final game, went all in, but just could not make it work. I was so excited to see a this is Rocket League moment where they kept the ball up for 20 <laughs> seconds. And then Justin, sorry, not just, uh, Arena comes flying in and then he, he scores a goal. But unfortunately, they aren't able to do so. Yara Valley Grammar, they take the advantage and they take the best of seven away with a 4-0 victory. Man, I got baited in so hard by the potential chance they have come back into. I was like, okay, they're playing more aggressive in, the, in these final two games. They're actually playing with you know, more tempo. They're not just retreating to this defensive play style. And they actually have a hell of a good shot here. They had such good ball control in so many of the situations. They just lost. I feel like they lost control for the side of Over Newton. I feel like they lost control far too early in the first and second game. And it was just going to be too hard to recover from that situation. You're right. I do agree with you. And we do now have to pick an MVP because I, I honestly think it's b between Pure Bum and WL. So I'm going to give you those two options because they've been, mm. they have so much presence. I am going to go with Pure here. Mm. Um, honestly, I think that, I think that WL, especially in the early stages, played brilliantly. Game one and game two, he was like my highlight man. But then coming into game three and four, which I'd argue is the more competitive games because we got to see Over Newton play more aggressive. We got to see them playing a different style, which I honestly much preferred out of them. 
Um, we did see Pure step up, say, okay, I'm in control of this game. You guys aren't scoring against me that often, and I will keep the drive. So again, I think Pure Bum for MVP is, is the right decision to go with. Yeah, I do agree with you. Even though WL, I have to give Torrance Uni University play the game for that previous game as well as mm. he slotted it in and passed Arena. A beautiful shot, a beautiful goal. But yes, Pure Bum do take, does take the MVP and he do the game. Those. He do take those. He do indeed take those. Right, guys, we will be taking a short little break, but when we come back, we have, of course, an interview with a member from the Yarra Valley, um, Yarra Valley Grammar. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Me and Tika will be back in just a moment.
family together. Optus Family Plan with four SIMs and 250 gigs of data to share. Hey guys, and welcome back. Of course, we just had our best of seven Rocket League finals for Victoria from Yarra Valley facing up against over Newton. Yarra Valley were the victors here. My name is still Ewan Midnight Reed. I am still joined by Tico, uh, Benjamin Tico Lee, sorry. To be full name, my guy. <laughs> and we, of course, have ourselves an interviewee, a member here from Yarra Valley. We have Very Speed now. Um, there's so much we can talk about to be, you know, you guys won Victoria, you guys are going to have to go facing the other states. But I think more importantly, mm. there's some, a very big topic we have to talk about, which is of course, yep. it's, uh, I hear it's someone's very special day today. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very Spence dog's birthday, uh, hey. the Blue English Staffy, the, the one and only Cash. Yeah. Happy birthday, very happy birthday. Make sure you give okay. her many pats for everyone in chat. I will. <laughs> but um we, we're gonna focus on this game for a little bit did you guys realize so at did you guys realize that over newton were playing a really defensive game and was there anything that you did to sort of counter that so right at the start after the first game we were actually discussing it because we realized all we needed to do is just chuck shots at the backboard and they would end up running out of boost because they were playing really defensive so mm. we just decided to dribble and take our time and worked, it was, worked out quite nicely, especially for the first and the second game. But later in the series, Over Newton decided, look, defensive isn't really working out for us. Uh, the third and fourth game played a bit more aggressive. Was then that sudden shift for you, for you and the rest of your team? Like, okay, now they're playing more aggressive. We have to be a bit more tactical with our approach. Well, yeah, after, after like the third game, we, uh, we realized that Arena was going for much more shots. And obviously he can take those. So we just had to rotate keep rotating and just keep the momentum because either way we it was pretty um it's pretty easy to just work around it and so when you look back at those previous four games what was a highlight play that you think that your team made oh um well in the first game we saw pure bum go for a, a doomsday dish off the sidewall but he missed it sadly and we've, we've been talking about that a lot because it would have been good for him to hit that but, uh, yeah, that was probably one oh. of the best. What you need to do is go back uh, after the broadcast and clip it for him and never let him forget mm. uh, that that one ended up missing. Um, but before, you know, you start having, you know, starting some beef with your teammates, um, I do want to ask, of course, the big question, which is now you guys, of course, you've taken over Victoria. Um, you guys will be pretty much leading the charge up against the other uh, states around Australia. Have you guys really been, I don't know, preparing for that, or was it very much a, okay, we've got a game today, we need to deal with this before we even consider looking at future games? Um, well, most of our focus was on today, but like over the past couple of weeks, we have been looking like in the general chat of the Discord and just looking at uh, who's who we, who we might be versing. And we know a couple of uh, of the players, so we have, been, we have been thinking about it, but most of our focus was on today. Beautiful, well, I mean, we're going to let you go after this last final question, just so that you can, you know, focus on making sure that these nationals are going to be big games for you. But um, how does it feel to be playing against other high schools around Victoria? And how does it feel to have won against all of them? Well, it's actually really relieving after all the nerves that we got today, because going into like the first game, it was actually it was pretty um, nerve wracking to see uh, that we're actually getting casted and every like all our friends were in the di um, the Twitch So um, it's actually just really relieving and obviously we'll deal with whatever comes next Yeah, pressure and stress can be of huge coming into this and oh, You guys seem to handle the pressure really really well a 4-0 victory is nothing to be ashamed of They're taking over nice and early uh, the last question before I, I, before I have to cut you off there, Tico, uh, but there is one oh, question. Now, right. New Zealand has a little bit of a scary team. Oh. Um, I don't think it's any any mystery to anybody that New Zealand, they won last year at the Grand Finals. 
they've pretty much got the same powerhouse coming in for this year. How confident are you and the boys that you'll be able to stop New Zealand in its tracks and keep them you know, off offshore for us? Oh well, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, we um we know about their team and we're just gonna keep playing. We're just gonna improve as a team because most of it's teamwork. Even though we've got different ranks um throughout our team, I think it's more just the chemistry that we need to work on, which should be good if uh, we just keep playing. There's no Victorian bias here, I swear. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just starting a war with New Zealand by mistake. You actually have. I don't think any New Zealanders will like the household name Midnight anymore. But Look, I'm. I'll survive. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is all we have time for for this interview today. But thank you so much for joining us, Very Sped. And uh, hopefully, you have a good round and good luck with the rest of your future games. Thank you. Yes, of course, that was from the side of Yarra Valley Grammar. That was very speed, giving us a very fun interview. But that's not it for Meta today. We do, of course, have League of Legends on later in today. Of course, I'd like to thank partners that we have to help run this kind of event. Of course, as I said before, you can see them behind myself and Tico. We have, of course, as we can see, Acer Intel, Optus, Torrance University, and Harvey Norman. Now, there will be unfortunately a little bit of a, a little bit of a break between now and the Rocket and the League of Legends games that we have later this afternoon. But as we said before, our MVP is Pure Bum. So massive congratulations to him today. We have a graphic showing up on screen for you just to show you that this man, this myth, this legend, he's been doing so well for the past four games that that he he deserves this kind of title. And he played that really, really well coming out there. But guys, there will be a little bit of a break before we do dive into the League of Legends. Approximately half an hour, I believe so, from what I'm looking at there. So we'll see you guys in half an hour. My name is Midnight. I've been joined by Tico. And we'll see you soon for League of Legends for Victoria for the Re Meta Regional Finals. <laughs>